I've known for a while now that this was the outfit I was choosing for this next makeover. I didn't know how hard it was gonna be to find the right piece for it. Then one day, my sister-in-law stopped over and she saw a dresser that I had made over. It happened to be her dresser from when she was a kid. She asked me if she could switch out her daughter's old dresser that I had previously made over for this one. And right away, I knew this was gonna be the Lady Edith dresser. I said, absolutely. So we went and we swapped out the dressers. back to the second episode of the Downton Abbey Furniture Makeovers. This is a series where I choose one character from the show and I give a piece of furniture a fabulous makeover based on that character's outfit. Today's inspiration is coming from the character Lady Edith. Lady Edith's character transformation in the whole series is just one of my favorites. I love the way her personality and just like her whole life changes alongside with her fashion. This dress is known as the Criterion dress. Hello. You look very glamorous. I thought I'd make a bit of an effort. Glad you did. It is rated one of the top 10 dresses from Lady Edith on the entire series. We are looking at a green backless chiffon gown and the bodice is covered with silver and gold beading. And then look at those gloves. They're like almost, they look like pearl to me pearl opera gloves. They're long opera gloves. I love this outfit and I'm not gonna lie. I may have bit off a little bit more than I can chew with this with all that going on and, and the bodice, but um, I'm just gonna have fun with it and see what I can come up with. I'm gonna give it my best shot. So here we go. As usual, I start my makeover by taking off the hardware and I am gonna replace this hardware. Then I take all the drawers out and I begin to sand them with 150 grit. I did a little bit of stenciling on this so it's not gonna take much work to remove that stencil. Once all the sanding is finished, I can take the piece back in the house and start cleaning it up. First thing I need to do is vacuum out all the dust. Um, and, and I caused a lot more dust by sanding it first. So <laughs> we're just doing some cleanup here. And then I take my vinegar and my water and I just wipe down the entire piece. Now I am painting this piece. And because I want to protect the wood underneath, I'm going to shellac this. And also because I don't want tannins to come through my paint. Um, you, you know, usually you would do this outside, but it was a nice day. So I opened all my windows. I let my dogs outside and nobody else is home. I put on my respirator and I sprayed indoors, but I highly recommend spraying anything, um, especially shellac outside. It's really early and I just could not sleep. So I got out of bed and I'm sitting here. I don't even have makeup on you guys. <laughs> Literally rolled out of bed. Um, but this is what happens when I just could not paint the piece yesterday. My original choices were gonna be mermaid tail and the gulf. And you know, that's just not it, right? That's not it, that's not it, that's not gonna work. So I started mixing colors and I started adding some kudzu in there and I think I got pretty darn close. I think I'm landing on, I don't know, can you see that? These, this one for sure looks like the bottom. I think we nailed it. And then, oh, is that one's drying? I don't know but that for sure. And then maybe I can lighten that one up a little bit more. So my mixture is gonna be two parts kudzu, which I did not see coming, one part mermaid tail, and then half a part of the gulf. And then maybe 
on the bottom, that's, you know, I'll do that on the bottom because that looks pretty, pretty darn close. And then maybe on the top, it just looks a little bit lighter. So maybe I'll add, um, I don't know, a little bit more of the golf. I don't know, I don't know. But I think it's gonna work out just fine. Let me show you how I make the molds. So starting this project off, I'm using this amazing cast in resin by uh, Lumalite, and it's just a two-part resin. I mix 15 ounces and then of part A, and then 15 ounces of part B, and I give it a really good mix. When I'm using this resin, I think there's like three minutes of working time, and I end up mixing it for probably a minute. But um, I did end up making so many molds that I ran out and I had to order another package of the amazing casting resin. So I did end up ordering two boxes in total and then I ran out again. <laughs> but I'll tell you more about that later. So I just pour it in there and then it dries within 10 minutes. And with this resin, you know, you can sand it, drill it, paint it. Now it's time to mix up my paint and I'm just using a plastic container because I'm going to do the two parts kudzu, one part mermaid tail, and then half a part of the gulf. <laughs> and that's going to be the bottom because the bottom half of that dress is a little bit darker than the top half. And for the top half, I'm mixing equal parts of the gulf and kudzu. And here's what it looks like side by side. I think it's pretty close. This color is making me nervous. I'm just gotta trust the process. It's gonna look beautiful, right? It's gonna look beautiful. <laughs> oh, I don't know. If you enjoy these inspired by makeovers, please let me know. Um, hit that like button, let me know in the comments. And if you're not already a subscriber and you wanna see more like this, I'd love it if you subscribed. It really helps my channel. It helps me to grow, it helps other people to see my videos. Um, so I would really, really appreciate it. Now I'm adding this hardware. I thought it would go perfectly because there are some dark spots in the dress. So I have to re-measure my holes and just drill one new hole and then I end up covering the other hole with some of that Dixie Belle mud. And you could use wood filler, whatever, to cover holes. It's just what I have on hand. And here's where things started to get really weird for me. <laughs> so on the edges, I wanted to add this white pearl because I wanted to represent the gloves in some kind of way. And I don't know, at this point I am looking at this thing and I'm just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> but it, it, it feels like it represents the outfit. And it is really, it comes on pretty, um, pretty light so I, I add two coats of this just to those like round, uh, rounded edges And now for the really fun stuff, it's time to decorate the molds. So to crack these molds, because it is the resin, it's kind of hard. I just take my razor blade and I cut one side and then, uh, I don't know why, I didn't 
cut the other half, but for the rest of them, I cut the top and then the bottom and then it just cracks in half pretty easy. And then it's time to glue them. And I know a lot of people use the um, tight bond quick and thick, but I don't have that on me. And um, I know that's clear, this is not, but I've done so many like wood you bends and molds with this and it works perfectly fine. You just make sure you clean up afterwards with a little bit of water. You can clean up with a rag, water, water in your brush and then wash your brush out. Then I just lay a bunch of like paint containers, something just a little bit heavy on them um, to dry and I let them dry for a couple hours. Now I want to add some gold leaf, but before I add the gold leaf, I need to add some glue. And I found that this stick with me glue works the best because you have so much working time. You really don't want to apply your gold leaf or your gold foil um, to it until it's dry, which takes about 15 minutes and it doesn't dry all the way. It stays tacky. So once, it goes from like white to clear, then you're ready to go. So about 15 minutes later, I apply this gold leaf. It's like a champagne, champagne gold leaf that I ordered a long time ago from Amazon. And I'm gonna add that to the middle. I'm trying to represent those circles on the bodice of her dress. Those like really gold, they almost look copperish, but this is kind of the best I can do because I do have copper. Um, foiling and copper gold leaf but I didn't want to go copper because it's not copper <laughs> what she has is definitely silver and gold Now once that's all cleaned up, I can go ahead and start outlining with the stick with me where I want to apply. I'm now I'm going to apply the gold foil from Dixie Bell. This stick with me uh, glue is actually from Dixie Bell and it's so sticky that in between uses, like right when I'm done outlining, I go ahead and into my bathroom and I wash the brush and I found that my hand wash was the best thing for getting my brush back to normal. I tried alcohol, I tried mineral spirits, I tried um, a regular or oh, dish soap, but I found that my, I don't know, the regular like cheap hand soap from your store, if you buy it in the little pump bottle, works really, really good to clean the brushes. So this is giving me some of the variations. I feel like on her dress, she has so much going on. There are, there's like different metallics. So we have silver, gold, different golds. The beads are all different golds. There's lights and darks and, you know, it's kind of hard to throw all that in, but you know, I'm just trying to do my best to like represent that. So I figured two different golds would be perfect. Thank you. 
Now this is where things started looking just not right for me. Um, I did this to represent that little top part of the little trim on her dress at the top. And I, so I followed the same exact, uh, the same exact process as I did with the gold, but now I'm going to do it with the silver. Now I know that that's what I wanted to do, but I don't think that I should have glued it to the top of the drawer so I did end up taking it off of the top of the drawer and I'm gonna place it somewhere else because it just looked too wacky it looked like there was too much going on and I do plan on selling this piece so I have to keep in mind that it can't be exactly like the dress it, it definitely I need to still be able to sell it and it needs to be practical so I I still use the the mold and those pieces but I just had to like a puzzle I had to figure out where it was too much and you know where it would fit nicely now because I'm not going to use this like I thought I was going to use it I had to make more of the gold molds but after two boxes of the alumalite I ran out and that had already cost me $42 for two boxes with the 16 ounces each. So I had some clay. I had Daz clay and I started making some out of clay, but I was so tired and I made like, I don't know, 20 molds and they just dried not so pretty. And that's probably my fault because I should have lined them up much nicer. But as you can see, it's just a mess. And how weird is this? So the day before, Let's Resin reached out to me to see if I would be interested in trying out their product. I was like, oh, wait a minute, holy smokes. So within a day, I got my product the next, they said, I said, absolutely. And I actually told her I'm using a resin right now and I ran out of it twice already. And this came like, it was so perfect. It came right on time. So let's talk about what polyurethane resin actually is. It is the same. It is a resin that dries after 10 minutes. It dries opaque white. It is a low odor, low viscosity. You can sand it, paint it, drill it. Um, it just comes like this. It comes in 30 ounces and 30 ounces for $42, I think. So it's almost double the product for half of the price of the other one and it does the same the one thing i did notice is that it has an odor so you wanna and that's with the polyurethane resin uh, let's resin carries so many different resins and i'm gonna be trying them all out pretty soon because i also use uv resin and epoxy resin and table resin so i'm gonna explore this um, company you know the resin for sure and but this one does have an odor so like I was saying you want to wear your mask and you no matter what resin you're using I would absolutely wear a respirator mask um, that's something I learned a really long time ago when you're using resin no matter what kind it is wear your mask wear your PPE you got to have some gloves on even I would put some safety goggles on because you don't want anything splashing in your face and that goes for any resin so very much like earlier, I poured part A, part B. I did 15, um, 15 milliliters and 15 milliliters, and then I mixed it up. You have two minutes of working time with this one. I mix it up for like a minute until it's nice and warm in my hand, and then I just pour it. Uh, I wait, it takes 10 minutes to dry, and once it's dry, I just pop the mold right out. the same one 
but half the price. Double the quantity, half the price. This whole thing was $42, 30 ounces and 30 ounces. That's 60 ounces for $42. So there you have it. I'm gonna leave the link in my description box for anybody who wants to buy it. I think we found an awesome product. So my next step is to seal the piece and I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. And I use this in my sprayer because I just get a really nice finish. There's no streaks or anything and it's so simple. And here's what I came up with. I'm not gonna lie, this project was, um, it was complicated for me just to kind of figure out where all of these elements should be, the gold, the silver, the pearl, um, lots of different metallics. There's even some bronze in there on the hardware. It definitely took me longer for this project than I thought it would, but I really enjoy doing these makeovers because it adds this element of surprise, even for myself going through it. If you like these type of makeovers, I would love it if you hit that like button. And if you missed the first episode, I'll leave it in the description box down below. I'll see you next time.